there are several methods you could use to control wax moth or manage the damage caused by wax moth. They do vary a lot in their effectiveness and also the ease of use and how dangerous they are. Um, we'll go through some of those techniques now. One method that can be used readily by anybody is to put the combs after they've been extracted back onto a beehive. The bees actively uh, walking around the combs will keep wax moth in most cases at bay. That may not be possible because your colonies may have died or the colony is not strong enough to cover all the combs so you may need to store that material in a shed or away from the beehive. In that case you need to consider a wax moth control program of some description. Some people have used a uh, insect zapper, this is a very simple one. The issues with those sort of machines or that concept is they're killing the adult wax moth but you don't really know whether they're killing the wax moth after they've mated and laid eggs or before. So you could still sustain a lot of damage to the combs using this sort of generalised insect zapper, if you like. Um, another method that can be used quite satisfactorily is to expose the combs to light and movement of air. You've got to remember that you need to cover your combs and protect them from robbing bees. But if you produced or built an insect proofed um, enclosure uh, out of uh, shade mesh or something like that where the, there can be a cross flow of ventilation and there's plenty of light getting into those combs, that will usually detract from wax moth wanting to lay in those environments. Temperature control is a major means by which wax moth is controlled in the commercial sector where large uh, cool rooms uh, built, constructed or containers, uh, uh, freezer containers are purchased and the combs are stored into, into uh, environments that, where the temperature is kept as low as possible. If the temperature is into the minuses then all stages of the wax moth will be killed. If it's into the early uh, uh, 4 10 degrees sort of direction then the activity will be slowed down to next to nothing. Um, another method that uh, is used quite frequently is the use of, use of fumigation or phosphine gap tablets. This particular method uh, is extremely dangerous. Uh, the phosphine tablets are bought from farm produce stores or the like. They come in an aluminium container to contain the phosphine tablets. Uh, they, you do need but, um, you require New South Wales to undergo some training in use of fumigants to be able to use these in a commercial setting. Uh, so that's just an example of a, a uh, qualification or the training certificate that you receive. The pellets are about this size. This is not one of those. This is actually blue tack made as a fake tablet because uh, once you've exposed them to the air, they start to release the gas. They are classified as extremely dangerous and they can be lethal and they have been responsible for fatalities uh, within Australia. When handling phosphine tablets it's important to have a properly fitting gas mask uh, with heavy duty plastic gloves. Um, also the premises which you're fumigating needs to have uh, warning signs, uh, poison gas, keep away, uh, dangerous phosphine gas etc. And you may wish to put, or you should have the date on which the uh, fumigations occurred and uh, make sure the premises where the fumigation is occurring is locked up so people can't get access to it. Therefore it's important also to have the area where you're fumigating well away from human habitation, pets and livestock. Um, when you're stacking the, the uh, combs up to be fumigated, they need to be sealed, taped and a single pellet put on a container or in a, in a uh, paper bag underneath the lid in each of the stacks. Stacks should be about four, five or six supers high. Uh, you really need to do your homework on using phosphine and don't use it lightly. Um, and treat it with a lot of respect because it is a very dangerous and lethal product.